Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Afterglow Live Recap Podcast. My name is Sia. And I'm Erin Greger. And we are the Dallas co-chairs of Global Leaders Organization. What is GLOW? Basically, it is the coolest business organization out there helping to bring great content, build a great community, and even greater of all, get you better access to capital. So if you have questions about Global Leaders Organization, hit us up or hit up with glow.com. So every week, Glow puts together and curates some amazing speakers. And this week was Bruce Clay. He is the founder of Bruce Clay Inc. And he's also the originator of the term SEO, search engine optimization. Whoo, that was a lot of words, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> what, is you okay over there? I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna handle this. So we want to welcome back an amazing guest because you know why? He's going to help us really understand and dig deeper with Bruce's uh, conversation with Michelle Pacente. Uh, so, Mr. David Saxby of Spark Communications, welcome back, sir. Well, good to see both of you again. Happy to be so, here. So, David is also the Dal or I oops habit. He's also the chair of Calgary. So, we are an international uh, podcast today. So. It's been a few moon cycles, sir. Last time you were with us, it was August 11th. So how's the pandemic uh, out in Canada and uh, what's going on with Spark Communications? Give us a heads up. Well, we're still getting some spikes in the uh, pandemic results. And so they're talking about locking the city down again. <laughs> but I'm sure that's universal. Everybody out there is probably going through that. So and uh, Spark Communications is doing well. We're working with clients on a coaching basis over the internet. So not a lot of live events these days for speaking, but uh, it's it's been fun. Well, fun, but it's relative, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> getting a little Zoom fatigue, but that's the way it goes. 2020 is like dog years. Like every month is like 10 months, if it's what it feels like. <laughs> exactly. Hopefully it ends. Right. Saw a Back to the Future post that uh, the uh, two main characters in it that it said, "Whatever you do, don't send us back to 2020." <laughs> <laughs> Thought that was, I, that I, was pretty good. Yeah, I, I, there was like this one, th uh, this like TikTok, I think it was, of this woman. She was like, "I wrote down my 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 goals for 2020," and she reread it. Like she was crying midway through, and it was just like the saddest yet funny thing at the same time i guess it's black humor but man alive um everything that she clicked on was like everything you can't do travel more you know like make new friends like it was pretty sad so okay let's get started here so good morning mike weiner uh with uh bruce clay is actually on so i'm sure he can add some uh thoughts as well and leslie and chris and eddie good morning everyone <sighs> What is SEO, you guys? Because I have, I thought I understood what SEOs, SEO was and was meaning. But as Bruce was talking more, I realized I don't fully understand it. So what does SEO mean to you, David? Well, SEO is just a method of being able to get the search engines to find you. The only purpose really behind SEO is to keep your business, your content, your information relevant to your target audience. So SEO is intended to drive traffic. But the challenge for most businesses is they think the magic bullet is just increase your SEO and you're going to have lots of customers. But for the majority of businesses, the issue is that once you get the traffic, you have to do something with it. So uh, because of my background in marketing, what I work with clients to do is, is to help them build that sales funnel and help them drive traffic through to converting them because you have to get them to want to do business with you. So you have to convert them. Then you have to turn them into clients you can do business with. And so Bruce was talking about it uh, from the perspective that SEO's job, the, the job of using SEO is not to get you business, it's to keep you relevant in your target market's mind and provide information. So the interesting comment that he made was that SEO uh, doesn't 
connect to the ads that are placed. That's SEM, search engine marketing. So when you place an ad on Google and a person clicks on that ad, it's called pay per click. So you pay for that, but that is not connected up to SEO as far as increasing traffic. What connects to increasing traffic is driving people into your sales pipeline and the content that you put on the internet helps increase the exposure. So that's the difference between SEM and SEO. So um, the other part that he mentioned, which was really interesting, was SEO is not about beating the algorithms. And an algorithm is what is used in the search engines to keep content relative. So SEO is about keeping the content relative. But the issue is you've got to beat the competition on search engines not beating the algorithm because the algorithm continually changes. And he was mentioning the fact that every keyword has 300 possible algorithms behind it. So a keyword oh is how people find you when they search. So uh, if you type in restaurant, it's going to bring up every restaurant in your proximity. Yeah, so I think, well, I was just going to say, I think that's the thing businesses have to be the most careful of when they're going for SEO, because it's very costly. Like he was saying, even if you have an in-person team, you know, you can look at easily spending five grand a month to have people come in. But I think the key to your point, David, is to really understand the customer you want and what you're trying to drive. So perfect example, chiropractor, you could yeah. spend a ton of money, a ton of money trying to get the up to the keyword chiropractor, right? But you got to understand that customer. Does that that customer just searching for a, a general chiropractor? They're going to it's got to be super close to them. They're probably going to want you to take insurance. They're probably going to have this really basic checklist of who you are. If you're more of a specialized doctor chiropractor whatever, those like you're going to want to go for more keywords that are specific to that you know what I'm saying? And I think people have yep. to be really careful because they, and I feel like SEO is one of those things they pay a lot of money for and people don't really understand what they're paying for. And they think that they're just flushing that money down the drain. And sometimes you might be if you don't have the right people, <laughs> but you know, it's really that understanding of what you're trying to get and how to your point, you're trying to convert traffic. So it's just, it's, it's definitely an interesting concept um, of how you generate ROI from the right SEO. Exactly. Yeah. They, one of the things I continually talk to clients about is the fact that they think that marketing is simply an event and marketing's not, it's a process. It's, you've got to have systems in place. You've got to have a sales funnel. You've got to be able to drive traffic to that funnel. And then you've got to have a, a good way of converting those customers, those uh, visitors to paying customers. And, and nowadays, I, I was talking to Sia earlier, and I mentioned I, I grew up in the era of the glory days of advertising where you had a fancy slogan, and that would draw people in the door. Great headline, great slogan, and uh, an offer, and boom, people would walk in the door. But that doesn't happen anymore because the whole marketing world is about providing useful, helpful information that draws people to you and builds a, a trust level such that you can put them into a, a continued communication until they're ready to buy. Because typically you're only going to see one to 3% of your market is going to be ready to buy today. So you've got to do something with the other 97%. <laughs> so Chris Matthew made a great point. You guys, he said, you know, as opposed to going for like casting a wide net and going for the width, he's, he's saying, go for the depth narrow your audience and dig in deep because if you know who your audience is the odds are higher if you dig deep with them and and get to know them they're going to be more inclined to take that action item whatever it might be in our case obviously is services um available exactly so um i think it's funny so eddie just said he just fired his seo uh, <laughs> and I, I wow eddie that that's really that's really interesting so could maybe this is selfish uh, on my part here you guys is could we see the way seo if it's optimized 
Is this basically the same way that we market podcasts as well, Aaron? It's a long term. It's not meant to be an immediate. It is more of the building credibility, building presence. Yeah. Is I mean, SEO is yeah, SEOs definitely one of those things you're like rank to the top. I'm all done, you know, finished. It is a long-term thing. You know, you have to keep and, and Google, it used to be like, I mean, I've been doing SEO stuff since for like 15 years. Like he was saying, I could get to the top of a rank in a day, just put the right keywords in, get everything. And then it started to be, Google would look and be like, well, if your, if your website hasn't been touched, we don't, we don't want to give people like your debt. It's dying. Right. So then evolving content became extremely important. Like they needed to see that you're constantly. And then what I thought was really interesting yesterday, what uh, he mentioned was 50% of your efforts should be going back and updating, making old content relevant again, which I mm -hmm. thought was super interesting. So a lot of times we're like, okay, well that content's sitting there and now it's good, but are you going back? And because a lot of what we talk about changes constantly. And if you're not going and refreshing that old data, that could also be another tick against you. Um, I look at SEO and this is how I was taught. And again, I wasn't taught by Bruce Clay, but it's really like a scorecard. Like, you know, you have these specific things. How are you doing your key? Where are the keywords, uh, you know, aligned in your, so you've really got to go and continually be making sure your scorecard is, um, is right on point. But uh, yeah, you definitely can't, you, you can't be ever, I don't think you're ever done with SEO. Yeah, the interesting point uh, as well was in regards to keywords. Um, keywords are how people find us. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is figure out who our audience is and what words they search for us by. And they don't search for your company name in most cases because they don't know it. They search for something of interest. And plus, Google ranks uh, information on the internet, whether it's information only or whether it's transactional in other words whether it's something like a shopping cart or a shopping system so there's a difference between the two so we need to be very clear as to what it is we're giving our customers as far as keywords to search us by we have to embed those keywords throughout all of our marketing but don't overdo it I mean, one of the old-fashioned ways of being able to draw traffic to your website was just slam the keywords in the background and everybody would find you well, Google takes that and just dumps your website off the system because they don't like that anymore. So um, we were talking about keywords earlier, too. Um, there's two kinds of keywords or, or two kinds of approaches to keywords. One is what he called head terms. So that's single words that connect to what you do, what you offer, what your business is all about. The second one was uh, coined by Malcolm Gladwell, and he called it long tail which is simply phrases that people search for you by. Now, the difference between the two is with the short words, that covers a broad market, huge market. Long tail narrows it down specifically to what your customer is looking for. The other thing he mentioned as well is that searches are uh, geo-targeted. So the neighborhood that you're in, where you live, your country, and so on, narrows it down as well. Plus, time of day, which I found quite interesting, is depending on the time of day, you could be at the top of the rankings or at the bottom. And, and so that was a different factor as well. So I, I think, uh, and he came up with an acronym, which I thought was very interesting. And this is how we position ourselves in the market to be connected to our target market. The acronym was EAT, <clears throat> Expertise, Authority, and Trust. So what makes us an expert? other experts referring us and connecting to us and people having conversations with us on a regular basis. What makes us an authority is continually being present when your customers have questions. So we mentioned a, a reference tool that you can use to find out what questions your customers ask called Quora. Yeah. If you go to Quora, you can see the con continual questions that people in your target market ask, go and answer them. And that also helps to connect with your audience. So, and the trust factor was basically, are you out there providing information? Or are you sp spamming people and trying to sell them stuff all the time before you build a relationship? So, and he said, it depends on which neighborhood you're in. And uh, I think he was talking about which communities you're in and do they spam or do they provide useful content? So I, I found that interesting. Uh, the other comment that I 
I saw in some of his information in the background, um, as I was doing a little research on him, was he said, it's not the job of SEO to make pigs fly. <laughs> I actually, I actually, I use that as a headliner on a LinkedIn post because I thought it was hilarious. I'm like, oh, yeah. that's interesting. What's he talking about? So, yeah, what that means is if you've got a lousy product, a lousy service, your company isn't putting people into a sales funnel, not providing information that's helpful or useful, and all you're trying to do is sell your products, that's a pig. That's a people pig. People don't want that. People want to have a relationship first, then buy from you. Unless True. it's a commodity. If it's something like a commodity, well, they'll buy from anybody based on price. And there's an old expression in the in the world of marketing a number of years back, and it said, if all else is equal, the only differentiating factor is price. So you've got to be able to define yourself separate from your competition and tell people what makes you good, different, and worthwhile to follow and trust. Man alive. That is so cool. I, okay, eat. I think we need, I need to make yeah, that, I like that mantra. I, I think it makes sense. In fact, Chris Matthew just shared this morning uh, um, this uh, infographic that I found from another networking group that I'm part of. And it was just talking about, you know, making the connection, you know, for leadership and actually making stronger relationships. I, I thought it was such a great infographic, which eat pretty much feeds right into, right? So, you know, yeah. who's just, if, if you've got val um, credibility amongst your peer group, you know, I hate the term expert and guru, but if you do something enough and you have enough experience, that tells, you know, me that you have something to say, you have an opinion or something of value to share with whatever your services are offering. So, uh, Jonas, I love it. You mentioned that um, you definitely need to know who you are and what you do. Um, a more common fa failure than people think. Um, Mike McAllen, by the way, shout out to you because he's also another podcaster and he's got a great podcast as well. And I will uh, pull your podcast up. Or Mike, tell me your name of your podcast because I forgot it's slipping my mind right now. But um, guys, we think we know who we are and what we do as a business. But isn't this where SEO can show us our weakness of how we act, what you, keywords we are using to describe ourselves? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think you have to be very careful. I mean, a lot of people try to be too many things. And it, the idea for Google, and this is, again, I'm not an expert. This is just the stuff I've been taught. But the idea for Google is if Google sends you some, sends a customer to you, right? If they list you, the idea for them is that they send you to a place that the person stays on for a while. So they're going to be paying attention. So if you're not clear about what you do, they're not clear, first of all, of how to send you traffic and B, if they do send you traffic and that person bounces because they got to your site and they're like, what the hell is this? This is not at all what I was looking for. Then Google's going to basically penalize you because you're they're sending you, but people aren't happy because obviously that's going to reflect on Google. Google's sending me this crap. So you have to be really relevant and you have to know exactly who should be on your site and what's going to make them stick around that site. And so those are things that that stickiness value is really huge. And if you're too general, if you're all over the place, people aren't going to stick around. Yeah, that was the point that Bruce made very clearly yesterday as well, is that whatever you do has to be related. So that means the content of your website must be consistent with what you say you do the communities you belong to and, and network with and the customers you bring in have to be relevant. And you don't want to put a whole bunch of different things on your website, like, you know, you're a pizza joint and a marketing consultant. Well, that doesn't work. Right. <laughs> so if, if you do have multiple products or services that may have a bit of a disconnect, one of the ways to draw traffic in is create what we call a landing page. And a landing page it does one thing. That is, it promotes one product or service, it has one offer, and it has one thing that the one action that the customer can take. That's it. So if you're promoting products and services, you're better to create a landing page than drive people to multiple things on a website. And so that's a very creative way of doing things. Uh, a couple of other things too, um, Bruce didn't mention this, but from a marketing perspective, we look at as well 
um, three aspects of media. And one is paid media. That's media that you've paid money for, basically advertising. So whether it's online pay-per-click or whether it's traditional media, you've paid for it. That means that that's where customers will go to buy. Second one is owned media. So that's things like our website, our business card, our marketing materials, and so on. We own those. So how do we how do we use those? Do we use those properly? Third one is what we call earned media. And this is where SEO really takes over, is that if you're continually providing good content and other people see you as an authority, and the media says this person has something of value to offer our audience, then that creates an earned position in search engines because you're relevant to your target audience. So I, th I think those are real key things as well. Plus, many businesses, this is one of the challenges I've seen, is many businesses have dumped traditional media to go on digital media. That's a big mistake because some of your audiences are still on traditional media. I'll give you a good example. Um, I've done work with the construction building industry, um, and uh, they're still traditional. A lot of their material is in traditional media. They're, they're not switching over to digital. I did some work with a client one, one time, and uh, what was interesting is they said, how do your customers you know, buy from you? He says, we literally have guys walking in with a two by four and an, uh, uh, an order on it. And they hand us the two by four and say, this is what I want. <laughs> so <laughs> they're not on digital media. In fact, he said, some of our customers just got email. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, that's funny. I was actually talking to a client the other day about that. Um, let, let's just say he's more on the industrial side of, of the in industrial industry. And he's like, see, it. My website doesn't need to look beautiful and, and we're not, we're not web designers or anything like that, but I did, you know, look at the website to understand, you know, who they are. And like you said, the landing page should be one message. And I got to tell you, it was very dry, but you know, he told me flat out, he goes, look, you have to understand my, my audience, my people are engineers. They don't really, this is just because we have to have something. And I was like, okay, I, I guess I, I see what you're saying. So <laughs> let me ask, let me ask. You I would argue that I would, but go ahead. Well, yeah, I, I don't want to go into too much detail because I want to go with Chris Matthews point here. He, he said to point out voice search and how it interacts with SEO. So the Alexas of the world and the echoes, the way we verbalize is not the same way as we type. Right. And, or, yeah. or you know, uh, t I guess written word. So how do we optimize for the, that then? think conversational so just like you and i are having a conversation if i was to write this in an article i would write my article in a conversational format because that's what alexis and and all of the other um, search tools will look for is a conversational term and it'll look for the words in the conversation that are relevant to the audience and you think about how people search you know they they search for common terms so getting back to your, your engineering company, one of the challenges with most companies and uh, professionals are really bad for this is they put features. This is the tools, the things they, they do. They should be putting benefits on their website and in their content and in their articles and everything they do because that's what the customer looks for is a benefit. What's it going to do for me? And you've probably heard the expression, it's a common old expression, Everybody looks for their favorite radio station, W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? Right? Right. So that's Never heard that benefit. before. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a common, common uh, message about uh, the fact that we really need to look at what the benefit is to the customer versus what the features are that we offer. Because think about a menu. You go into a restaurant, do you order everything on the menu? No. You look for what benefits you at that time. If you're on a diet, you're not going to buy uh, a meal that has a lot of carbs. So that's the difference between features and benefits is you look for something that serves you and what you're looking for now. So think about our articles, think about our websites, think about our conversations online, answering blogs as an example. So many blogs you can comment on. 
If you're in business, join a community where they offer a blog and make comments on that blog. And that helps increase your rankings in the search engines. So the interesting part that he made a comment on yesterday as well was the fact that he said, think about what Google is. It's in the information business, not in the advertising business. So yeah. we're putting all this advertising out there and it draws their traffic in, but by buying a pay-per-click ad doesn't necessarily mean Google's going to rank you higher in the search engines because that's not their job. They're looking for conversation, information, and connection. Okay, so let me ask you guys this. Um, he said, you know, FAQs, the importance of FAQs, listing, you know, the typical inquir inquir I gosh, you guys, I've just learned my speech impediment. Inquiry, inquiries, crees. Inquiries. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I mean, are, are we taking advantage of these FAQs? Because, you know, oftentimes when I go on a website, I don't go to the FAQs. Well, again, it comes to watching your traffic. If you've got a website for a business, watch your traffic and see where people go to on your website. And if they're asking a question about a specific thing, give you a good example. A software company online has uh, help information. Now, it may not say FAQ at the top, but it's doing the same thing. It's answering the question that the person searches for. The better you can answer the question, the higher ranking, the more the customer is going to keep coming back. So the FAQs is, is one way of doing it. Just have a, a page within your website that answers all these questions that your typical customer asks. So again, if you use a reference tool like uh, Quora and you go there and find out what typical questions are, put those into your website, then that will help rank you as well. That's such a great tip. I hard I didn't realize that either. And I've been to Quora so many times and I just don't think about it because I just assume it's there. But to leverage it for your own website to to generate traffic, that just makes absolute sense. It's so basic. No, I've had people like clients of ours have grown podcast audiences based on Quora because they go out and say, Oh, we recorded an episode on this. Go go find it. And I know um Will Bunker, he was co-founder of Match, he built, he really started focusing on building his expertise and used Quora to uh, connect to his Twitter base and really uh, built his Twitter base based on connect by connecting with Quora. Yeah, wow. I, I think that's the thing. And plus, you get to know your audience. You, mm -hmm. you get to know what their pain points are. And quite frankly, if you wrote articles about the pain points your customers have and offered a solution or an opportunity to learn more about how to solve the problem, that's very helpful as well. So um, I also work as a business coach with a lot of organizations, primarily in the area of sales and marketing. We have what's called a conversion formula. And that is, first of all, attract attention. Second of all, engage them. So the attract attention is get a headline that addresses the pain they're having. Uh, then give them something of information in the subheadline that tells them you have a solution. Third part is educate. So tell them Here's how you can help them simply, easily, quickly. The last part is uh, uh, get them to take action, whatever that might be. And, uh, you know, you go back to the chiropractor we were talking about. It's not about book an appointment. It's not about anything uh, in regards to call us or that sort of thing. It's about put something on your website that talks about a specific pain that you deal with with your customers, write articles about it, engage them and put them into the sales funnel until they're ready to solve the problem. Oh, I love it. I love it. David, I always love having you on. And, you know, for those that want to get a hold of you, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, they can reach me at sparkcommunications.com. That's my website. My email address is D Saxby. So my first initial and my last name at Spark Communications. And they can also call me. I'm happy to take calls. 403 585-9870. And of course, if you are in the Calgary area and are interested in learning about Global Leaders Organization and how David runs his chapter, definitely ping him as well. Aaron, what, why do we care about this GLOW thing? Yeah, so GLOW stands for, well, you just said it, Global Leaders Organization. What we're talking about today is a series that they do every Thursday, but we didn't even get to talk about the good stuff that Bruce talked about in the VIP section. So basically we have these meetings every Thursday and then you get to like 
go over to another group where you get access to that speaker and can ask all kinds of questions. So that is available for premium members. So hopefully as I don't know, we'll be meeting in person at some point, God knows when, but until then, this is still a great organization to be a part of and connect with and network with and, you know, getting access to these people. So head over to with glow, G L O.com and uh, join a local ch uh, chapter. Hopefully you'll join Dallas. Woohoo, Dallas. And speaking of which, next week, if you want to, not next week, we are taking a break next week for Thanksgiving. Week after December 3rd, Kevin Harrington, one of the original sharks of the Shark Tank, is uh, joining us. And he's talking about mentoring um, and his experience and how you can uh, take your career to the next level. So if you're interested, again, go to WITHGLO.com. And on that note, everyone, since we are taking a week off, have a wonderful weekend and week. Happy Thanksgiving in America. And I know Canada was last month, so happy belated Thanksgiving, yeah. everyone. May we all be in happiness and full of food and gain 15 pounds together. Until then, <laughs> see ya December 4th for the next Afterglow Live Recap Podcast, everyone. <laughs>